Hello, in this video I'm going to do my best to answer some weird and wonderful GarageBand community questions from around the internet. Paul asked on Facebook, do you know if there are any issues in GarageBand or known plugins if updating the Mac OS to the latest version Ventura on my Mac Mini M1? Thanks for great videos and support. Thank you, Paul. So as of this video, I've had Ventura installed on my Mac Mini M1 for just under a week, and I've only really came across one serious problem. The first time I opened GarageBand after updating, the program seemed to get stuck, kind of, while updating information about audio unit plugins. Spinning beach ball of death, the full shebang. After a few minutes of waiting, I force quit the program by right clicking on its icon and selecting force close, and then just reopened it again. And that seemed to do the trick. No idea what the issue was, but GarageBand and all plugins that I have installed have been working fine since then. Now, that's just my experience. If you decide to update to macOS Ventura, then please, please, please perform a time machine backup beforehand. That way, if something does go wrong, you can always roll back your previous backup. David got in touch via email to ask, I'm in Alabama laying tracks down on our first bluegrass album. My son in Arizona is going to be mixing slash mastering the project. What is the best way to get files to him from GarageBand? David doesn't mention which version of GarageBand he's using here. I'll show you how to do it on Mac as the process on iOS is a bit more involved. I do have a full walkthrough for iOS on the channel, I'll link it in the description below, and if you could give that like button a wee tickle on the way past, I'd really appreciate it. David also doesn't mention what program his son is using to mix and master the project. If his son is using GarageBand or Logic Pro, then the process is pretty straightforward really. He just has to find the GarageBand project file on his Mac, right click on its icon and choose to compress it. Then either email the file if it isn't too big or upload it to a service like Dropbox or Google Drive. David can then simply share the link to the file with his son. His son can download it and open the project file in his installed version of GarageBand or Logic Pro. Notice that his son would need to be running the same or newer versions of GarageBand or Logic Pro for this to work. If David's son is using a different program, then he'll need to export each track from the project individually before sending these separate tracks or stems over by themselves. Again, I have a full walkthrough on how to do that on Mac. Again, you'll find the link in the description. Next up. Next up. Next up. All right, all right, I get this question a lot, all right? And the bottom line is no, you cannot install GarageBand on Windows or on an Android device. You just can't. Anyone who tells you otherwise is talking complete nonsense. Or they'll tell you to run a macOS emulator on your Windows machine and then install a ropey old version of GarageBand that probably won't have any instruments or loops included and will run like absolute garbage. Look, there are loads of really good free digital audio workstations available for Windows and Android, and most of them will do everything that GarageBand does. Personally, I'd recommend checking out BandLab. All right, back on Facebook, Joseph asked, is there a way to get the playhead back to a certain position without having to drag it? I'm trying to record beginning at a very specific position, and when I mess up and need to do it over, I have to drag the playhead back manually. Is there a shortcut of any kind? Yes and no. GarageBand for Mac has a really good built-in cycle feature. By clicking on the grey area above the first four bars of your project, you'll see it turn yellow. 
Hit play and you'll see the playhead will start at the start of the cycle region and when it hits the end, we'll jump back to the start again. Move it to where you want it, you can resize it by dragging the edges with your pointer and when you have the cycle region set up where you want it, hit record and start play. As the playhead reaches the end of your cycle region, it will jump back to the start while continuing to record, which allows you to capture as many takes as you need for a particular section. Once you're done, hit stop and you'll see a small number in the top left of the region you just recorded. This is the number of takes that you just recorded. Click on it to see a pop-up menu from which you can select whichever of your recorded takes you want to use. Easy peasy, not so straightforward on iOS unfortunately. On iPad and iPhone there is no cycle region, instead you'll need to set up a section to be a specific length. In the tracks view, tap the tiny wee plus icon in the top right corner, tap add, then the blue eye icon and then adjust the number of bars you'd like your section to be. Next, open track controls by tapping the sliders icon in the top left, then tap on track settings. Open the recording drop down menu, then tap multi take recording to turn it on. Now, when you record, when the playhead gets to the end of the section, it will jump back to the start of the section and continue the record. Using multi take recording like this on iOS allows you to access multiple takes the same way you would on Mac as well. Last up, Stephen asked a cracking question over on the GarageBand users Facebook group. Question for the group, so many folks that use other DAWs say that GarageBand is for beginners and is very entry level. Do you think an advanced GarageBand user can create a song every bit as good as any other DAW user with equal skill levels in instrumentation and recording knowledge? I hear this quite a lot too. Listen, the bottom line is that yes, of course you can create professional quality music in GarageBand. Yes, you will have more limited mixing and editing options when compared to Logic Pro, for example, but if you're living that bedroom musician slash home recording enthusiast life and don't really care about getting lost in the weeds of in depth audio engineering, then GarageBand is a very capable DAW. It's also worth remembering that your listeners really don't care how your music was made. Nobody's listening to the latest Arctic Monkeys album and thinking, hmm, was this made in FL Studio or was it perhaps Pro Tools? I wonder what brand of compressor he's using on his voice. All that matters to your listeners is the music you make and not how you make it. You'd struggle to find a better example of amazing professional quality music being created in GarageBand than Mr. James Timms, who has been creating fantastic hardcore slash rock slash metal loveliness for years using GarageBand. Take a listen. Proof if it was needed that you absolutely can create killer music using GarageBand. You'll find links to James's YouTube channel and his Spotify down in the description. If you have your own burning GarageBand question, no, not that one. Leave a comment below or come and hunt me down on social media. And for more GarageBand knowledge bombs, watch this video next.